let's see some basic points about the coulomb theory so when we saw the rankine theory so there was this basic assumption that the whole soil mass was in plastic equilibrium but the way i explained so i i explained it like this so i told that a slip surface develops and the shear resistance will be there because of the shear strength and this mass tries to move away so this is the this is how coulomb's theory is derived in this case a wedge shaped surface is considered so this is the wedge shaped surface and it passes through this toe of the wall so it will be something like this and a planar surface is considered so this surface is planar and so this wedge is considered instead of the whole plastic equilibrium in the soil so this is the basic difference between the coulomb theory and rankine theory there are several other assumptions also so we'll see that backfill is dry cohesion less homogeneous and isotropic so this is the similar one as the rankine theory so it is also first developed for the cohesion less soil and then it was taken to the it was also considered for the cohesive soil the backfill surface can be planar or inclined so this backfill surface if this is the wall so this can be like this also or this can be inclined we can consider any of that friction is considered between wall and the soil material so this wall and soil there will be some friction so that is considered in this theory the sliding wedge is considered as a rigid body so th there will be this sliding wedge so this is considered as a rigid body not in the plastic state no plastic state the position and line of action of earth pressure will be known in advance so it is assumed that the earth pressure acts at h by 3 from base and we will know this angle of friction between wall and the soil so using that the location of earth pressure is also known so this is I have tried to show here this is the wall and this is the inclined backfill making angle beta so W is the weight of this soil wedge so this is the soil wedge which will fall if we are talking about the active state or it will go up in this direction if we are talking about the passive state so here we take three forces in equilibrium that is weight of the soil mass in the wedge and the reaction reaction R that will be there due to the angle of friction so soil will be resisting its movement downward and if we are talking about the active state so due to this angle of friction the r is acting at an angle phi from the normal so this is the normal and the reaction is acting at an angle phi from here so we know this direction of r and so and we know the direction and magnitude of this weight and this p force this third force p this will be our earth pressure so this what is this it is a reaction between wall material and soil so this reaction has has developed due to here this this soil is trying to go downwards and the wall friction is opposing that movement so due to that the, this is the resultant reaction it is making an angle of delta from the normal of the wall so these three forces are considered in the equilibrium so this is a force triangle which will be made here we know the value of w and we know the direction obviously and we know the direction of r because we know the angle of friction and we know the direction of and location of p because we know delta and we know that this, this p will be acting at h by t from the base so using this force triangle this part will give us the value of earth's pressure so using this we get to know the earth's pressure so there will be many trial wedges 
the trial wedges are considered in this case and we put these three forces in equilibrium and we try to find out the earth, earth pressure so active earth pressure is the active pressure is the maximum pressure that will be applied on the wall before the wedge moves downward moves downward and outward also so here this wedge is trying to move downward and outward so the maximum force that will be applied on this wall due to the soil mass will give us the active earth pressure whereas passive earth pressure will be the minimum force so the minimum force due to which the soil mass or the soil wedge will move upward and inside we can say because in case of passive earth pressure it will go like this so this soil wedge will move upward and inward so this is the case and one more thing is here if we compact the soil so what will be the effect on active earth pressure and what will be the effect on passive earth pressure so if we compact the soil then active earth pressure decreases whereas passive earth pressure will increase so we can imagine this because we have compacted it so the soil grains will come closer and there will be less tendency to move away so active earth pressure that is the pressure applied on the wall will decrease whereas because these are compacted now if we are pushing this soil inside so they will put more resistance so more force is required for the wall movement so we can say the passive earth pressure increases